In this video, I want to share a few 10 tips I wish I knew before starting to play the Undernight series. There's a lot to learn in this game, as you could probably tell by the game's super comprehensive tutorial, so I wanted to give you a more streamlined approach on how to start winning more games. Let's go, let's go, okay. No clue what's going on. The number one tip I can give you is learning how to stop mashing. People love the press buttons in this game, and for pretty good reason. Here's a very beginner block string that some people might do, right? So I got hit out of my block string. Now what you wanna do is called staggering, right? So in this game, you can delay your cancels from normals. So instead of canceling them all right away, you can basically delay the cancel by pressing the button a little late. And if you press it late enough, you'll get a counter hit. You can actually stop them from mashing really, really easily in this game by just delaying your normals, which makes stagger pressuring really strong. The way you can test this out is you can put a reversal action on the opponent and have them mash something on block and it'll come out in training mode and you can make sure that you're delaying properly. You do have to delay it quite a bit. It takes a little bit of getting used to. And this is really important because once you get them to sit still, you can start going for pressure resets like this and you can start to do really cool mix-ups. So for example, this can also be used as zoning. So for example, Kuan has a fireball that has two parts, but if you delay it, you can actually make it so there's a large enough gap that you can catch them dashing forward or, you know, mashing for whatever reason. So make sure you're staggering. Tip number two is dash blocking is really, really strong. So there's a lot of characters that have like full screen moves, full screen fireballs. Kuan is no exception. Um, and these can be really hard to react to, right? If you look at the startup, this is 20 frames. That's considered to be borderline unreactable. And the main way you get around this is dash blocking. Now, dash blocking is really strong um, because during this whole dash, as long as you hit back right away, you're actually blocking while advancing forward. So you can do this to get in on zoners, can do this to be a lot safer in your approach. So for example, yeah, you see how I was able to guard. The other advice I give for this is use the dash macro. So if you press A, B and forward, you can dash. It's a lot quicker than hitting forward forward. You see it takes about eight frames to do that, whereas opposed to just hitting the macro, I can do it almost instantly. So make sure you're doing that. It'll make your dash blocks a lot cleaner. Tip number three is to learn just one basic bread and butter that works for everything. So just one combo. And usually these are one of the easier trials. The main thing is the, the way the proration system works is that your combo off of something like this you can do a lot longer combos off of a short starter as opposed to a long starter, right? So take, for example, this core combo for Kuan. You see how this, this will start with a 2B. And the thing is, when you start a combo with like not much proration, you're able to get longer extenders in the combo and therefore get more damage, right? Let's say I try the same exact combo, but with a different starter. As you can see, it's, it either becomes a lot harder or impossible to do the same combo because they're able to tech out quicker. My recommendation here is just to learn one basic combo. And so here's an example of a combo that works from basically any starter. As you can see, very consistent and you don't lose out on that much extra damage. And this combo works in the corner, in mid screen. You wanna simplify things so you can start to execute them in an actual match. And as you get better at the game, you can start to incorporate the more optimal routes as you go on. All right, so tip number four is just block. Now, we talked about how strong staggers are because you basically get a frame trap anytime you're doing a cancel, right? Now, the thing is, pressure is not infinite in this game. There's a lot of ways to reset pressure in this game, but they all carry some type of risk. So let's take, for example, Kuan. So if you mash on this, you're gonna get full combo into a lot of damage. And so, of course, like I can start like now that you respect me, I can start going into this, which basically resets my pressure. Or I can start going to this. You know, this is a fast overhead. I can go into empty jump low and like, you know, there's a lot of like trickery, but once the trickery starts <laughs> or like once the turn stealing starts, then mashing becomes good again, right? So it's really like a give and take, but you want to lead off of blocking just because blocking is really, really strong in this game. You actually get reward for blocking in this game too. So, I'm just like an example block string. They're actually building more grid than you are doing offense, right? And the thing is chip damage, if you look at the chip damage, this doesn't do that much damage, right? So you can afford to have a couple turns stolen on you just so you make the opponent comfortable and make your mash that much more effective because there's no real mix up here, right? It's not high, low. I just keep stealing turns and 
I have the potential to throw you, but throws are risky because they lose the mash as well. Sometimes you might not know what to do against the block string, right? There is risk inherent with any type of mix up. There's not really many true 50 50s in Undernight, so there's always something you can do. And thankfully, that brings us to tip number five, which is the replay takeover feature. Now, this feature is awesome. I wish every single fighting game had this. And I'll just show you an example of me getting cooked by the best phone on in North America. And we'll see some of the things that I could have potentially done differently by using using the replay takeover feature. Now, as I'm going through this, I'm relieving my PTSD, right? I've, I've blocked this all out. Um, this looks scary. I don't know what's going on. Um, I tried to DP out, did not work. So what can we actually do against this block string? Time to find out. Okay, mashing was not the option. Let's try mashing a little bit later. It looks like when she charges the fireball, there might be a gap, right? All right, so the first thing I'm noticing is that I can react to that charge with a DP, right? Since when she charges the fireball, there's a gap. Obviously, if your character has super, you could do the same exact. Thing. The other thing, it looks like you can just shield her out and then make her whiff the 5L after. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things you can do. Obviously, I can keep going into this. I can keep diving in. But looking at these replays, trying to take over, very essential for learning the matchups. And this actually brings us to tip number six, which I didn't even realize. But once you block enough, you'll win the grid war, which means that you'll get chain shift. And now chain shift is really, really strong. And you want to make sure you use it, right? Especially when you're in knockdown, getting pressured. So I could just like mash this. Right, so you see how, how I won the grid war because I basically took a bunch of hits. And so I can use that, I can mash it out in pressure and then I can get a guaranteed DP because I can react to the uh, the freeze frame, right? Now, I didn't have this on wake up, but it's this thing is really good on wake up as well because you can just see what they're doing, pause and then do an invisible reversal. So very, very strong. And it also grants you meter too. Like the worst thing that happens is they don't do anything. And now you still have an opportunity to scramble and you get free meter. So you want to make sure you're using chain shift a lot on wake up to get out of pressure. My tip number seven is don't worry too much about grid, right? That's the bar at the bottom of the screen that we keep talking about. And obviously when you win the cycle, you get chain shift and chain shift's really strong, but there's a lot of interesting dynamics to this. But as you see, you get chain shift for a lot of things such as doing assault, such as walking forward. And because like both of these guys are trying to win chain shift, you get really, really weird interactions like this. <laughs> where they had they waited until they got chain shift and then did the throw so don't worry about any of that it gets really complicated it gets really high level mind games at high level and that's one of the reasons why diehard uni fans love this game but when you're just starting out don't worry about too much and if you don't believe me i asked rurik who's one of the strongest players in america what his number one tip for beginners were and this is what he said number one tip for newcomers is just play the game. Don't worry about the little grid bar at the bottom. And if you happen to ever uh, have chain shift available, just use it on wake up. Uh, you might see an opportunity for a reversal, but worst case, you just get some meter and meter is great. It seems counterintuitive, but there's a lot more important things to learn first. And I guess if you want to start using grid, the one recommendation I would be shielding fireballs in this game is really good. Um, obviously, shield gives you extra grid. So you see how much grid that got me. That's part of the reason why projectile zoning, while it can be scary, it's more used to set up pressure as opposed to truly zone the character out because you just give the opponent free grid. So don't be afraid to block projectiles, but also don't be afraid to shield them as well, especially things you can shield on reaction. Now, tip number eight is to abuse your resources obviously we talked about chain shift if you have chain shift in neutral obviously you can do certain things like i can do slide into chain shift i can do this this overhead in the chain shift i can do the low into chain shift but the same thing happens with your meter you should have a few ideas of how you want to use your meter with your character so you're not just sitting on 200 meter at all times because you regenerate meter really really fast in this game so for example with kuon i can do this and if it hits i get a full combo you get the idea. But I can also use it to make certain things safe. So for example, he has this Lua of Flight that can be kind of scary. Um, it's unsafe, but you can make it safe by canceling into this move. And 
If it hits, you get a full combo, right? Same thing with the slide. Now the slide, it's really good because it hits low, but it can be unsafe. You can make it safe with this meter super as well. So you can see there's a lot of different ways you can use your meter. Just make sure you have a couple of go-to meter usages, right? All right, so tip number nine, how to open up your opponent. Now, I think the first mix up you'll do is strike throw, right? And this is kind of throw and this is strike, but this loses to people just delay teching, right? Now there's a lot of different option selects in this game. You can go through the tutorial and check them out. All of them really be strike and throw. So you need a different way to open up your opponent. And the most common way is doing assault. So for example, we'll have the dummy do run up assault. And if I try to delay grab, I get hit, I get punched, I get full combo. So make sure you incorporate that in the game plan. The other thing is just doing delayed buttons. A lot of these option selects, so for example, I think the most powerful throw option select is this one that also anti-airs as well. They took the really broken option select out, which where you could block and throw option select at the same time. They took that out, so they're not as strong. I don't recommend learning them right away. But the whole point I'm trying to get is that you have other options besides strike throw. So if it feels like you can't open up your opponent you can do certain things like delay button right you can do certain things like assault bait you can do like one button into assault because you might catch a delay throw another throw bait that's also really cool is you can like dash forward dash back and then try to whiff punish them and you see you do quite a good amount of damage if they uh you happen to catch your button or you, they happen to throw attack there's a lot of different things but make sure you're using some type of throw bait right and tip number 10 would be you know have the right mindset you know i think a lot of people playing this game for the first time they might get intimidated or you know if you're coming back after a long hiatus you might get intimidated because this game is pretty similar to the original and if you look at the tutorial list it's like literally like 179 tutorials or whatever you might not quite know where to start i would recommend doing everything eventually but take it one step at a time there's a lot of information to digest here and if you just kind of bum rush it you'll you'll forget about a lot of stuff you can revisit this as time goes on there's a lot to learn you're gonna have a lot to improve on there's a lot of character people that have been playing their character for years you can't expect to you know be as strong as them you know playing this game for a couple weeks right but you take it one step at a time you have all the resources you have community people to look at you have replay review you, know, you have replay takeover you have the game's tutorial system and the important thing here is just to go in with the right mindset and focus on having fun focus on learning I'm not sure what else to say this game's sick so hope you guys enjoy it like share and subscribe take care y'all and peace